One fact about matrices that turned out to be pretty important was the rank nullity relationship. So this was the fact that if you have an m by n matrix A, then the rank of A plus the nullity of A, those have to add up to n, right? So it would be this turned out to be useful in a lot of situations, so it would be really nice if we had some corresponding fact about general linear transformations. Right? If we interpreted uh, an m by n matrix uh, as a linear transformation from r n to r m, then what the rank nullity relationship says is that, well, the rank is the, the dimension of the image of this linear transformation. And the nullity is the dimension of the kernel of this linear transformation. And this linear transformation is the just multiplication by a. Uh, and n is the dimension of the domain space, right, rn. So it would be nice if there were some sort of corresponding fact for general linear transformations. You know, if we had a general linear transformation from v to w, it would be nice if there were a corresponding fact. But you know, we can guess what the corresponding fact ought to be just by essentially copying this this relationship down or reinterpreting it in terms of our general situation. So uh, the dimension of the image of t, well. A general linear transformation has an image. That image is a subspace of W, and so it has a dimension. And so the corresponding thing to the dimension of the image of T is just the dimension of the image of T. Okay. Um, what about the dimension of the kernel of T? Well, T is a linear transformation, so it has a kernel. That kernel is a subspace of V, uh, so it has a dimension. So the corresponding thing to the dimension of the kernel of t is just the dimension of the kernel of t. So not anything interesting happening so far. What about the dimension of Rn? Well, Rn shows up here because R, Rn is the domain space. Well, in this situation, the domain space is v. And so we might expect that the dimension of v will show up here. So this seems like a, a decent guess for something that should be true about all linear transformations. Uh, let's prove that it is true. So um, let's see. To reason about dimensions, we're going to have to uh, come up with bases for, uh, for something. We're going to have to come up with bases for something. In particular, probably right, all of the spaces involved, the image and the kernel and v. But the thing is, the image, it's a subspace, but it's a subspace of w. And the kernel is a subspace, but it's a subspace of v. Right? So somehow we're going to have to relate these things. Right? And the way to relate them is using the, the linear transformation. Right? That's what uh, sends us from v to w. Now, before we, before we dive in, I want to note that uh, for Euclidean vector spaces, we had these fact. We had a couple facts about bases. So we had the fact that every subspace has a basis, and also we showed that we can extend any basis for a subspace to a basis for the entire space, for the whole space. Okay, So we proved this for Rn. But if you go back and look at the proofs of these two facts, they only depend on the idea of span and linear independence. But we have span. Uh, we have corresponding notions of span and linear independence in general vector spaces. So the proofs that prove these for Rn actually prove them for any vector space, any finite dimensional vector space. So right, we can take these facts as true, uh, as long as v and w have to be finite dimensional.
And again, we aren't really going to work with infinite dimensional vector spaces at all. So, All right, so with that in mind, how can we proceed? Well, uh, we have this, we have this uh, subspace in W, so we can choose a basis for uh, the image of T. Okay, let's call it W1 up through W uh, M, I guess. Sure. Okay. Um, also, we can choose a basis for the kernel of t. Now these vectors are in v, so let's give these v-like names. Say v1 through vn. Okay. Um, now with these w's, right? These w's they all live in capital in the vector space capital W, but we have this linear transformation that links v and w. So using that, since all of these uh, all of these w's are in the image of the linear transformation. That means there are vectors, say, u1 up through, sorry, let me write it this way. There are vectors u1 whose image is w1 all the way up to um whose image is wm. OK? And because the w's, so the, all the wi, are linearly independent. The u's are linearly independent. Right? We proved that if you have a linear transformation between Euclidean vector spaces, um, if the image of a collection of vectors is linearly independent, then the original collection of vectors is linearly independent. But that proof only, uh, the proof of that fact only used ideas about linear independence, and all of those ideas carry over to general vector spaces. So the same proof works for this situation. All right, so now we have all of these vectors, the v's. These are linearly independent in v. They're linearly independent because they're a basis for a subspace in V. And then also we have these U's. These U's are also all in V. Okay, And uh, so right, what we're kind of looking for is some way of expressing the dimension of V. Well, we have all these vectors that are, li that are linearly independent. Um, so wouldn't it be nice if when we put them together, we got all of V. So I guess we have to, right, what I'm, guess, what I'm suggesting here is that maybe if we take all of the V's and all of the U's, maybe these, maybe this collection is a basis for capital V, maybe. Right, that would be ideal. Well, to check if it's a basis for capital V, we have to check two things. We have to check if they're linearly independent, and we have to check if they span V. So let's check linearly independent, linear independence. OK, well, let's suppose we have a non-trivial, or let's suppose we have a uh, linear dependence relationship. That's the term I'm looking for. Um, so we'll write it like these, like this. So the a's are going to be the scalars for the v's, and the b's are going to be the scalars for the u's. Uh, like this. Ah, this should be an m here. OK, so this, these, so if this is a linear dependence relationship, that means that this has to add up to 0. OK, well, let's start by, so our goal here, if these, if these vectors are going to be linearly independent, um, that means that we have to somehow show that all of these coefficients, all the a's and b's, 
actually have to be 0? Well, it, it's hard to know how to proceed, right? Um, because right, we know the v's are linearly independent, but the u's might mess that up. But we know the u's are linearly independent, but the v's might mess that up. So it's hard to know what to do. We only know about the u's and the v's individually. But there's actually a way we can get, we can get rid of the v's, which is we can hit both sides of this equation with the linear transformation t. When we do that, on the right-hand side, we just get 0. Now, this is a different 0, right? This is the 0 vector in w. Up here, this is the 0 vector in v. Um, OK, but then we can use the linear transformation property of t. We get a1 t v1 plus dot 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 plus a n t v n plus b1 t u1 plus dot 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 plus b m t u m. OK, so what do we know about what t does to these vectors? Well, all of the v's are in the kernel of t, right? That's what we assumed at the very beginning. So the v's are in the kernel of t, so these are all 0. <laughs> these are all the 0 vectors. Right? So this whole first portion just disappears, essentially. And then uh, t what about t of all the u's? Well, t of u1, that's w1. And so on, down to t of un is wn. So we have a linear dependence relationship among the w's. But the w's are linearly independent. So that means that all of these b's have to be equal to 0. Okay. Well, now we're halfway there, because now our linear dependence relationship, right, now we know all these b's are actually 0. So our linear dependence relationship says that a1v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n Right. Now we have all these uh, all these zeros, u0 times u1 plus dot dot dot, down to 0 times um equals 0, the 0 vector. Well, all the u's are gone now. So now this reads a1v1 plus dot 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 plus anvn equals 0. But the v's are linearly independent, right? The v's are a basis for the kernel of t. So all of these a's have to be equal to 0. And that means that our linear dependence relationship at the very beginning is the trivial linear dependence relationship. So the only linear dependence relationship among the u's and v's is the trivial one. And that means that the collection of all our v's and all our u's together is linearly independent. OK, so this collection is linearly independent. Now we need to check if they span v. OK, so how can we check if they span v? Well, let's just take any vector, little v, in capital V. What we need to do is express little v as a linear combination of these vectors. Um, so what to do? Well, just like with linear, just like with the linear independence portion of this, uh, it's a little easier to work in W because we have a complete va basis for W already, um, or for the image of W anyway. So instead of working with V, let's work with T of V. Now T of V is in the image of W, capital W. So we can write t of v equals, um, say, b1, w1, plus dot, 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 plus b, n, w, n. Right? These w's form a basis for the image of, sorry, this should be image of t. Uh, the w's form a basis for the image of t, so t of v is in the image, so it has to be a linear combination of these. OK, um, then uh, note, just as a side note, that uh, if we take the corresponding linear combination of the u's, then 
we actually get uh, we get right the linear transformation property for t says b1 t u1 plus dot 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 plus b and oh, this should be m here b m t u m but this is b1 w1 plus dot 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 plus b m w m right which is t of v right so what we've done here is we found a vector that has the same image as v now that doesn't mean that it's equal to v right it might not be there might be two different vectors that both get sent to t of v um, but what we can do is consider the vector v minus b1 u1 plus dot 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 plus b m u m. Now if we take the linear trend, if we uh, apply t to this thing, sorry, there should be an m. If we apply t to this thing, then what we get is t of v minus t of b1 u1 plus dot 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 plus b m v m. But we've already shown just a second ago that this is actually t of v. And so we get 0. Right? Now this means that v minus b1 u1 plus dot 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 plus b m u m is in the kernel of our linear transformation. And that means that we can write it as a linear combination of the v's. So it's equal to a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a uh, a n v n. But now look at this. We can just rearrange this equation to solve for v. So v is a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n plus b1 u1 plus dot 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 plus b m u m. So what this is showing us, right, we took an arbitrary vector in capital V. We were ex able to express it as a linear combination. So now these vectors v1 through v n, and then u1 through u m, span capital V. Well, we already knew they were linearly independent, so this is a basis for v. So now that we know a basis for v, we know the dimension of v. The dimension of v is just n plus m. So remember our guess, what we were hoping is true, was that the dimension of v was equal to the dimension of the kernel of t plus the dimension of the image of t. But when we wrote down a basis for the image of t, it had m vectors. So this is m. And when we wrote down a basis for the kernel of t, we wrote down n vectors. So that's n. And the dimension of v, we just showed that it's n plus m. So is this true? Well, yes, it's true. They're both m plus n. So this rank nullity result that we guessed way up here actually is true. So there's a rank nullity result for general vector spaces, just like there is for Euclidean vector spaces and matrices.